Ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Waco from Revolution. I've just spent an incredible Saturday. I was at Philippe Dufour's 75th birthday party, and there I met the gentleman that is here with me today, Hervé Schluster, and I feel that he is poised on becoming a great independent watchmaking legend in his own right. Uh, in fact, his life is intersected with Philippe Dufour's in a very special way, and he's actually been around in the watch industry and accomplished some pretty cool stuff already. But the first question I'm gonna ask to you is a very simple one. How are you, sir? Uh, thank you, how are you, and you? Really good, thank you so much. And uh, tell me about uh, what Philippe Dufour Dufour meant to you, to be part of the 75th birthday celebrations, to understand what Philippe Dufour has contributed to independent watchmaking, was a special moment, yes? Yes, it's a poetical moment, it's fantastic, and uh, many people uh, give the love for Philippe and uh, the gratitude for, for all Philippe make for the, for the watchmaking, for the people, yeah. I mean, when you see people like uh, Jean-Claude Biver, Max Busser, the Gronenfeld brothers, yourself, um, Kari Vutalainen, um, Roman Gauthier, all these incredible watchmakers there to celebrate this man's life, it's something remarkable, you know? Yeah, like uh, the all-stars of the NBA, huh? <laughs> exactly, yeah, the, the dream team. Yeah. Absolutely, the dream team, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess if we're going to talk about the dream team, we have to say that then there's a new addition to it. Uh, and his name is Erwin Schluster. Right? <laughs> Thank you. So much. before we look at your watch, which um, I hear is remarkable, tell us a little bit about your life. You know, how did you become a watchmaker? I have the um, my first job. I am a um, driver for architect, and I have one one year um, free um, before my, my my job, and I make a stage for the watchmaking. Oh. And um, when I go to the stage, I am um, I okay. go to the electrician. Okay. Um, and um, when I, I see the beautiful woman make the stage in the watchmaking <laughs> and uh, the guy organize the stage, the OK, uh, maybe uh, the guy would like a change. Yes, yes, <laughs> I change. <laughs> I go to the watchmaking. Excellent. And when I make the stage, the first time I um, I'm touch the movement and I see the balance will move, I say, oh, this is my way. And uh, it's fantastic. And when I, I be back in my house, I say to my father, uh, OK, I, I would like to change my way. I go to the watchmaking school. Yes. And after that, I make four, four years in the port a technical way. And uh, after my technical school, I go to the Valjean, two years. And after that, I go to the um, STT, Progress Watch and SCT, and after Dimier Manufacture and Bove. I stay uh, 17 years in th the same place. That's really cool. So actually some of the names you mentioned may not, you know, uh, our viewers may not be aware of them, but they're actually very famous names in watchmaking. So after watchmaking school, you went to Volgine, and Volgine is now become Richard Mill's company, right? It, it's, it was uh, created by his partner, Dominic uh, and Guna. So it was created by his partner, Dominic Guna, and now that has become Richard Mill, essentially, which is incredible. And I think you were mentioning to me that you met Richard Mill at a time even before he had created his own brand, right? Yes, this is before, and uh, he talked to me, uh, uh, it's possible I put the new material in the watch, and at this time I say, okay, what? You put the carbon, uh, the things of the, uh, the uh, fast car, different things, okay, it's not true. <laughs> Okay, so maybe it's a good idea, and you see the, the story. And, and the, the company, which initially was called Progress and then became STT, is also extremely famous in the watch industry as well, because it was one of the first companies to correctly industrialize the tourbillon movement, right? Yes, for sure, yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's very the fantastic experience, because you have many brands, uh, and you make the, the movement for many brands, you, you, you feel different mindset of the brand. Uh, yeah, it's very, it's fantastic, it's funny. So when Pascal Raffi bought SCT and he transformed it into Dimier SA or you know uh, Beauvais uh, Movement and Complication uh, company, yes. how how was the relationship between the two of you, and how did you become the technical director? Yes, it's very um, logical and natural things because um, in the start I am watchmaker, I am chief of the, the, the workshop, and uh, one day uh, the, the the manager of the decoration. Uh, is break uh, one arm. So maybe a way you would like to uh, take the decoration. I say, okay, yes. And uh, f the fabrication, different things, and always in the workshop. I love, I'm very curious, and uh, I, uh, I look all all the workshop, the first technical workshop, and after all the manufacture for the, the last year. 
And then you became the person in charge of developing the movements as well. So yes. you became the, the chief constructor as well. Yes, with, uh, with Mr. Rafi, we talked together for the, the, new, the new way for the, um, the house Bove. And after uh, I take the ID, I move and I make the movement and the, the time pieces, yeah. But then at some point, your path intersected with probably the most famous independent watchmaker in the world. And this is Philippe Dufour. So tell me how this relationship started and how did you spend time together? Yeah, um, you know, when um, in 2016, uh, I am an emotional, big shock emotional, because my, in October my father is dead, oh, and sorry. two months ago my first uh, son is born. And um, I have technical director at this moment, and I, I say, okay, I would like to follow my dream, and my dream, this is the traditional watchmaking heart, like Philippe Dufault. And I leave Beauvais, and um, I call Philippe, very naturally. I explain my move and say, okay, um, I would like uh, go to the to the bench uh, to the bench and uh, say, okay, I like you move. This is a courageous, uh, um, courageous move, and uh, he helped me. And uh, the feeling between him and me is really really cool and very sensitive. Yeah. That's incredible. So let me get this right. In 2016, after your, your father passed away suddenly, yeah. and two months later you had your son, you experienced this kind of um, existential crisis in some ways as yes. to what did you want to do with your life. And then you took it upon yourself to step away from a very high paying, successful job as the technical director of Bove yeah. to find your own path. And that path led you to Philippe Dufour, right? Yeah. This, this is like a, almost like the, the you know, Chinese martial arts movie. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah. And then I think there's this wonderful Buddhist saying, which I know you like as well, when the student is ready, the master appears, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For me, it's, it's perfect uh, image for the Philippine. And, and so I guess Philippe somehow materialized. And Philippe Dufour is a genius, but he is also notorious for not suffering foolishness or any inability in skill. Like mm -hmm. for him, he is probably the most demanding taskmaster or teacher in the world. So how is it that you managed to um, become so close to him, become such great friends with him, you know? Yeah, it's, um, I'm very lucky because Philip uh, give all the knowledge. It's very, it's very generous and uh, with patience. The guidance is very soft. He, oh, wow. Yes. Um, I, I, he left you to choose your own path. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. And, um, and when I talk the, for the project Tree of Life, right. it's okay uh, because the project Tree of Life is born after I leave Beauvais and because my father would like uh, pocket watches. My father say, okay, Ray, you make the beautiful thing for different uh, brand. Now I would like a pocket watches. And when my father is dead, uh, my first move, it's too late, but that's it. I make the pocket watches. For your, your father, even yes. though he passed away? Yes. Wow. And I imagine in these pocket watches the philosophical world for me and maybe for my son. And this is the start of the, the tree of life. And after, I imagine one time pieces for the grandparents, one time pieces with the mindset for the parents, and one for the children. Okay. So the watch we're about to see is the first watch that you have displayed to the world. It is essentially the watch for the child, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. it's the watch for your son, for example. Absolutely. When he grows up, because yeah. you know. Yes. And it is called Essential. Yes, Essential. Okay. Can we see what the watch looks like, uh, Hervé, and can you tell us a little bit about it? Please. Yeah. I'll let you do the unveiling. Oh, please. Uh, okay, please I'll do the unveiling. <laughs> Wow, that's stunning. Thank you. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> the inspiration, this is the, the old pocket um, uh, movement of pocket watches. So, okay, since I'm uh, looking at the movement now, why don't we start a little bit with this movement? Because I see some extraordinary details here. 
I see um, yeah, ratchet wheels with the Dent de Loup, uh, wolf's teeth on yes. them, a hand finished, of course. I see this very uh, Philippe Dufour like uh, spring, the flat bladed spring, yes. right? Uh, for the barrel. I see an incredible array of gently curved steel finger bridges that have been um, black polished to Absolutely. the maximum, <laughs> yeah. right? I see huge wheels, um, a rouage much greater than I normally see in, in most watches. Uh, I see a stunning, massive balance wheel. And I see in this little bridge here with the Rue des Chantements just next to it, what looks like a very particular type of escapement. And all of this together is mind-blowing. So tell us a little bit about it. Yes. Um, the first thing is the, um, the balance wheel. It's very important, the big, big one. And the inspiration, this is the, um, the shape of uh, Guillaume. It's very, very big. And um, I manufactured himself my balance wheel. And I, I searched the good feeling and the good balance between the chronometry and my, my wish for the, for the design. And in the escapement, the anchor, I make himself my anchor. And um, this is the equilibrium anchor, like uh, all pocket watches. Moustache. Uh, Moustache, yes. Dude, that's so cool. Yeah, it's, it's simple, but it's really funny and a geek detail of watchmaking. Well, what I love about it also is that, you know, when you there's a lot of escapements which are really interesting, but you can't actually see them. Um, you know, like the Chapmont Naturel, for example, that it's implemented in other watches. Uh, oftentimes it's obscured by the plate or whatever, or by the bridge. Mm -hmm. This you can see, and you can see it interacting with the yes. balance wheel. It's absolutely stunning to behold. And uh, I love the architecture also of the balance bridge and complemented beautifully by this really curved yeah. swan neck regulator, you know, um, which is super stunning. And then this uh, balance wheel, which has been uh, blued, flame blued, I would imagine, with this Breguet overcoil. And then, you know, the finishing underneath the movement, like, is incredible. Like, just the whole area underneath it with the engraving that you see there and the uh, polishing is absolutely stunning. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Wow, that's really cool. And the sun, the sun of the when you are you are waiting the the timepieces, the crown. Oh, that's good. So tell me why it has such a particular sound. Sorry? Tell me why it has such a particular sound. Oh, is this it the is, spring? Yes, the spring, the shape of the spring. This is really the, the same of the, the pocket watches. And you're using um, German silver, my shore? Yes. Uh, with some incredible internal angles, a la Philippe Dufour. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. And uh, yeah, quite a few of them actually. Yeah. <laughs> Without treatment, it's very important. For Without the, treatment, yes. Yes, for um, the after self service, it's more comfortable for yeah. the watchmaker. And then this one uh, is Grenet, but you were saying that you can also have it with Cote de Genève should you wish as well. Yes. yes. It's possible you chose the. I would be very interested to see your Cote de Genève because you know, Philippe Dufour's Cote de Genève, it looks like the light on the mountain where like you see the you know the rivers and valleys Absolutely, right yeah. uh, here I would, I would be very interested to see what your Cote de Genève looks like okay so we're going to go from there and incidentally bravo on this because it's stunning um, to the front of the watch and tell us a little bit about the time display that we see here yes this is the the regulator very I love the regulator because it's very pure and simple right and uh, I chose the the hour I make a big window this is the philosophical disc, and in this disc I put um, the words for, for my children and for the philosophical words. This is in the sun, this is today and right now. It's simple words, but today and right now we're sharing the, these time pieces. It's not, it's two hours, it's now. Right now, yeah. yeah. The, so this is uh, Hodi Nunk. I didn't look in Latin. Latin. Yeah. 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 Grew up in America. I can't, I can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love it also because it's a wonderful combination between um, a poetic expression of time with this 24 hour disc that rotates once a day, yeah. you know, and with the beautiful sun, which is an adventuring bed with printed and then applied with gold for the sun yes. and then silver for the moon. 
um, it c combined with precision at the same time because you have a regulator. So you've got this oh, massive minute hand and you've got the sub-seconds uh, dial, which is very visible as well. And if I'm not mistaken, if I pull it, it's yep. going to be, it's, it's, ha it's hacking as well. So I'm going to yeah. turn it over and I have to look. And the question is, so that, yes, the, what, what, what is that spring doing there? Now I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the very, brake of that. <laughs> it's very so lovely. elegant, actually. It's very elegant, yeah. yes. So I have to say, even the brake mechanism for the balance wheel is so beautifully executed. Everything is curved. It's curved. Like everything, you know, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. It's got such a beautiful shape. I love shape. The, the bio design, you know, I love the curve. Right. And, yeah. And so I, I like it also because it's a combination of different techniques. So as we said, we've got adventuring printed and then um, with a hand application of gold and silver for the sun and moon. Then we have this center section, which is uh, my shore again, but Guillaume Chama. Right? Absolutely, yes. And you were telling me that the owner can even choose the geoshe pattern they want and even the color of this, of this area as well, Yes, right? absolutely. And uh, the guillochage, I make uh, himself the, the guillochage. You make it? Yes. So you've got your own like a rose engine machine. Yeah, yeah. I am um, lucky for the, I have the, the other teacher. This right. is Georges Broadbeck. Ah, okay. Georges Broadbeck, this is... This is uh, the legend of uh, Guillaume. We yeah. saw him at Dufour's party, right? Of course, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he accepted to teach me. Wow. It's crazy, man. The uh, second one, the yes. first one is Philip. This really is a Kung Fu movie, because after <laughs> yeah. you learn one, learn one style of Kung Fu, you have to go learn the second style of Kung Fu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, it, I'm amazing. very excited for, for the Guillaume because wow. the aesthetic is very incredible, and the mechanism for the machine yeah. is... Right, it's very... And then you've got yeah. this steel frame um, that is also like uh, highly polished as well with great angles on it. Yeah. And then you've got the sub-second dial and then the track for the minutes. Uh, this is Confo Enamel, right? Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. And uh, the hand, it's uh, handmade. Too. The hands are handmade. Yes. Hand bent, hand blued as well. Absolutely, okay. yeah. So everything's by hand. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So just even the, the sink for the pinion, uh, cannon pinion, the, the way it's polished is, yeah. pheno is phenomenal as well. Okay, so we have in the sun uh, right now, and in, in the moon you were saying there's a message as well. What is the message yes. in the moon? Uh, love and gratitude. Excellent. Yes. Wow. It's so smooth. Yeah. Yeah. You were telling me, Hervé, that a client could even choose the special message that's inside the sun and moon. Yes, it's possible you put in the disc um, uh, under the balance wheel. Yes. Under the hat, it's possible you put the, the words. So it's, you were mentioning to me the size is 39 mm in diameter. The uh, thickness without the sapphire crystals is 8, and then with the sapphire crystals is 10. Is Absolutely, that right? yeah. yeah. But it's perfectly balanced on the wrist. That's a stunning watch. Thank you. And the price of this watch is 78,000 Swiss francs before tax, correct? Absolutely, yes. yes. Yeah. But am I correct that they're all sold out? Yes, sold out, <laughs> yes. It's Perfect, incredible. you're just going to frustrate the people out there. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, but, but are you receptive to meeting clients? How, okay, if someone wanted this watch, how would they, how would they meet you? For me, the best way, I am, um, I need um, the Russian with the, the collector. Yes. The, he go in my workshop, yes. Renfer Park in Bien, and we talk together and that's it. I like this. So I think this is a very equitable way to do it. So if you are interested to acquire one of these watches, I think the best thing is go to uh, Hervé's workshop in Bien, sit down with him and have a conversation like human beings. Absolutely. Right? So this yeah, is the, the nicest is way. The mindset, exactly. yeah. You know, it's funny because uh, like for me, I always want to collect watches from watchmakers whose personalities that I, I, I really like, you know, or people that I love. But I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. If you are a watchmaker and you have only so many watches you can make, you probably want to allocate the watches to people that you also really like, right? <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Hervé, I know you mentioned that you had already thought of the watches that you want to create for the parents' generation and for the grandparents' generation. Yeah. Without saying too much, because I know you will unveil those slowly, um, can you give us a little bit of a hint as to what to expect for the future? Yes, uh, when I start the project Tree of Life, it's not just one time pieces, it's uh, in reality three time pieces. And um, I make the construction for the, the third time pieces. And now um, I start the fabrication 
for the for the parents and uh, and for the the grandparents. And for the grandparents, this is the the big one uh, complication. You see that, huh? Amazing. <laughs> I, I've seen it. It's, it's very <laughs> special, and it features a complication that has never existed before, and has very cultural relevance as well. So it was very interesting to me. So this watch. I can tell you right now, it's phenomenal. And people, you need to come check it out somehow, so get your ass to Bien and go, go meet Hervé. But it is stunning, so elegant, so um, charming from a cultural perspective, so overwhelmingly ravishing from a watchmaking perspective. Everything about it from a sound perspective of winding it to the, the mustache escapement and to the Guillaume style balance wheel, it's all amazing. Um, the last question, I believe the very first piece of this went to a very special person. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, uh, the first person, it's um, one collector say, okay, Ray, you make different things for, for many brands. Now I would like your name in the, in the dial. And this is for me, this is the, the start. This is the, the godfather of the project. He said, okay, show me your project and he, he buy the, the first one. Not just the first one, but the next two as well, from what I understand. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting for all the project and uh, I give many energy for the, I say, okay, this is the right way for me and uh, it's fantastic for me. So the last question, what did Philippe Dufour say when he saw the watch? Philippe said, okay, you are crazy. <laughs> he, he like it, he like the, the details the perfect finishing and uh, the architecture of the movement with the, um, he said the Swedish, he liked the Swedish of the, the, the movement and the identity is very, is clear. It's, it's you, it's, yeah, me. it's unique. Yeah. That, that I think is the most important thing right now because we are now in a period where everyone can see that independent watchmaking is extremely popular, right? Yeah. And so many new independent watchmakers are, are rising up, but this is a very personal voice from both the dial side and also the movement side. And I think that's very important. It's a singularity to it. Well. Absolutely. Oh. You know, when I start my own uh, brand, uh, it's very uh, interesting to say, okay, what is really my, my style, my design? Yes. My pure and the, the, right, the work is very interesting and I search uh, the good way. And, yes. Uh, yeah, and I am happy for the, for the feeling. Every, in, in some ways, you're kind of a guy that has had you know, two fathers. You had your actual father, and then you had your spiritual father with Philip Dufour, right? If your father was alive today and he saw this watch, what do you think he would say to you? Um, this is really emotional. I imagine uh, you are proud of my work, and uh, maybe he smile, he smile because uh, he look, I am just happy, and this is finally the target of my life. I'm Now I'm free and happy. I, I live my dream with uh, the fantastic people, Philippe Dufour, Sean Prodbeck, everyone. This is for me. Yeah. This is the, the big target. It's for this reason, my father, I imagine, small with Prod. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Eric. Sure. Cool.